Shalom, and here's a message for the week. Monday and Tuesday, the 22nd and 23rd of June, marks a very special day in the calendar. 1927, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, was arrested in Russia for his work in underground spreading Judaism throughout the Soviet Union, former, former Soviet Union. He had a network of rabbis teaching of moyles, performing circumcisions, of mikvahs, and of course, the, the, the communists, uh, the Bolsheviks, the Yuvsekzia, which is a special Jewish brigade to uproot Judaism, went after Schneerson, Rabbi Schneerson. If your name was Schneerson, you were on the blacklist. And at one point, they arrested him. They took a gun to him and they said, we need to have the names of all the rabbis in your network. He says, I'm not sharing. They took out this gun and said, you know, there's a toy here that makes people speak. He says that toy helps for people with several gods, with one world. I have one God and two lives. Put that away. It's not going to help. Finally, he was released from prison Monday and Tuesday this, this coming week. Marks the day he was told he would be free and be released from and was released from prison. Eventually, that led um, the previous Rebbe to the United States of America in 1940, and that led his son-in-law, our Rebbe, to establish Chabad in the United States 10 years later after they set up shop in New York in 770 Eastern Parkway and make Chabad what it is today. He said on that day, it wasn't just me that was redeemed, but any Jew, any person that has the name Jew associated with him was redeemed on that day. And it showed us that if you just follow the Torah, no matter if you have the whole government against you, the entire superpower of the former Soviet Union against one rabbi with a white beard or with a long beard, if you were a betting man, who would you bet for? Schneerson or would you bet for Stalin? But of course, Yiddishkeit continues, Judaism has survived and the communism is gone. So the message is clear. When you're following the truth, when you're following Torah and mitzvot, you have nothing to worry about. Hold your head high, not arrogant, but proud and strong and kind and loving and keep on moving forward to what needs to be done. Now we live, we don't have the challenge of persecution anymore, but the challenge now we live is even greater in a way. We live in freedom. And the challenge is, can we maintain our Judaism, our tradition in America, in a free country where you can join the country club, any country club you want, but can we still remain who we are? A lot of people talk about the United States as a melting pot. We'd like to think of it as a noodle pot. You have to stay your own noodle, stay proud of who you are, and you can still mix with everybody else. So the message is clear. We have our freedom, yet at the same time, we're not going to rest. We're not going to be complacent until the world is permeated and filled with the knowledge of God, like Isaiah says, like the water covers the seabed, that every person should, that like the prophecy of Isaiah, that one nation shall not lift a sword against another nation. We call those days the coming of Mashiach. In fact, the, the Parsha this week talk, the, talks about the Gentile prophet Bilam, who prophesied about the day that of the, of the coming of Mashiach when all people will live in peace together and all the Jewish people will go to the Holy Land of Israel. And as Maimonides always said, or, or, or lived by, that if the world, world is on a scale of good and bad, you do one more mitzvah, you can weigh the entire world for the positive. Shabbat candles, putting on tefillin, mikveh for married women, kosher, charity, any mitzvah we can possibly do can tip the scale and bring Mashiach for all mankind. Have a wonderful week and have a good Yom Tov.